from the dramatic scene in Revenge of the Sith, whereby Darth Sidious commands the clone troopers to execute Order 66 and eradicate the Jedi, one might think that the Jedi were completely caught off guard when the clones turned against them. The faces of the Jedi killed by the clones under their command demonstrated the shock and confusion that personified the 1,000-year goal of the Sith Grand Plan to destroy the Jedi Order through manipulation, deception, and gaining strength in the shadows. As the scene played out, one can't help but feel that the Jedi were completely helpless, outmaneuvered by the forces of the dark side that made their demise inevitable. But the events that occurred in Season 6 of the Clone Wars TV series demonstrate that the destruction of the Jedi Order was not as unavoidable by the time of Revenge of the Sith as one may have initially thought. There were many opportunities for the Jedi to realize that there was a nefarious plot in motion regarding the clone troopers, and that investigation should have been performed. In fact, Yoda not only had the knowledge to uncover Order 66, but to prevent it. As someone who himself was unable to prevent the complete annihilation of his friends by the forces of evil, I might not be the best critic of Yoda in this instance. But that said, I'll have to go pretty hard here on this one. In this video expose, I will describe why Yoda should have prevented Order 66 and explain three crucial events and pieces of information that he was privy to that should have made it clear that the clones were connected to the Sith and a threat to the Jedi. The first event that should have assisted Yoda in preventing Order 66 was his discovery that the Sith were behind the creation of the clone army. After Plo Koon discovered a lightsaber and confirmed it belonged to the deceased Jedi Master Saifo Diaz, Yoda started investigating the death of the Jedi Master. Ultimately, after Yoda learned from former Supreme Chancellor Finnis Valorum that Saifo Diaz had been sent by the Republic on a secret mission to negotiate with a criminal organization known as the Pike Syndicate on the moon of Obadiah, he dispatched Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi to discuss the matter further with the Pikes. On Obadiah, Anakin and Obi-Wan learned from Lom Pike, the leader of the Pike Syndicate, that the Pikes entered into an agreement with a man named Tyrannus who, of course, was the Sith Lord Count Dooku. The deal required that the Pikes kill Sifo Diaz by shooting down his ship, which they ultimately carried out and handed over Sifo Diaz's body to Dooku as proof of their success. Dooku, who by that time had also traveled to Obadiah in order to tie up the loose ends that were starting to become unraveled by the investigations into Sifo Diaz's death by the Jedi, confronted Anakin and Obi-Wan, and engaged the two Jedi in lightsaber combat. When Lom Pike emerged and told Dooku that he no longer had any business remaining with the Pikes, and referred to him as Tyrannus, Anakin and Obi-Wan became aware that Dooku was Tyrannus, and therefore, behind the murder of Sifo Diaz. Although Dooku was able to escape from Obadiah, after Anakin and Obi-Wan reported what had happened, and their findings to Yoda and the Jedi High Council, they understood that from the beginning, Dooku and the Sith guided the creation of the clone army on Kamino. As stated by Yoda, it was clear that their enemy created an army for them to utilize in the Clone War, and that the circumstances that they were in had been set up by the Dark Lord of the Sith. Instead of being a moment where Yoda or the other Jedi on the Council drastically changed course, or brought these findings to others outside of the Council, it was agreed, although reluctantly, to cover up the discovery, as the Jedi Order and the Republic could lose public confidence and mass chaos could arise if the public knew that the Separatists and the Sith were behind the creation of the Clone Army. Therefore, at this point in the Clone Wars, Yoda understood and was confident that the Sith were behind the creation of the Clone Army, and provided it to the Jedi to enable them to fight side by side in the Clone Wars. But this was not the only event that should have suggested to Yoda that a nefarious plot was in motion created by the Sith to destroy the Jedi through the use of the clones. The second event that should have assisted Yoda in preventing Order 66 was his vision in the Cave of Evil on Dagobah, which vividly showed clone troopers attacking the Jedi as part of the Dark Lord of the Sith's overall scheme to eradicate the Order. Directly after learning that Dooku and the Sith had killed Sifo Diaz, and maneuvered the Jedi into fighting a full-scale galaxy-wide conflict beside the clones, Yoda began meditating deep into the Force, 
to determine how it was they were so easily manipulated and the endgame of the Sith's deception. While meditating, Yoda heard the voice of former Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn, who attempted to explain to Yoda that he was now part of the Living Force and prove that it really was him. Yoda then went before the High Council and informed them that he was hearing a voice and wanted to know if any other members could hear it. Although the Council meditated for an entire night, Yoda was not able to hear the voice again, nor could the Council sense anything. Fearing that he may be under attack from the Sith, Yoda underwent medical treatment, which proved unsuccessful in providing any answers regarding the voice. Desperate, Yoda agreed to undergo a dangerous deprivation ritual that would help him go to the source of the voice by placing him in an induced meditative state. During the procedure, Yoda was able to again hear the voice of Qui-Gon, who told Yoda to travel to Dagobah. After escaping the Temple Infirmary with the help of Anakin, Yoda and R2-D2 proceeded to Dagobah as instructed by Qui-Gon. Upon arriving on Dagobah and venturing into the swamps of the planet, Qui-Gon again made contact with Yoda and explained to him how one was able to manifest themselves after death through the Force and how he was only able to manifest himself as a disembodied voice due to his training being incomplete. Importantly, when Yoda asked Qui-Gon if he knew the identity of the Sith Lord, he told Yoda that he could only show him a place wherein the answers could be revealed to him, which was the Cave of Evil located on the planet. After Yoda entered the cave, he saw a clear vision where Jedi were engaging in combat against the clone troopers, in addition to Darth Sidious killing Jedi. Yoda asked Qui-Gon bluntly when the visions would occur, clearly demonstrating that Yoda understood that at some point, the clones would turn against the Jedi and the Sith would move against them, with the possibility that these events would be connected. Also important was Qui-Gon's answer to Yoda, that although it wasn't known when the events of the vision would occur, every day that the Clone War was being waged, the more evil was growing in power. This indicated to Yoda that the war itself, and the Jedi's participation in it, was directly fueling the rise of the dark side. Therefore, after his vision in the Cave of Evil on Dagobah, Yoda clearly understood two points prior to Order 66. First, that the Sith were behind the creation of the Clone Army, and maneuvered the Jedi to fight beside them in a galaxy-wide conflict, and second, that the clones were very likely to one day turn against the Jedi as part of the Sith plot to destroy their order. Further, it was the Clone Wars itself that was the key to the Sith plan, as the conflict was allowing the Dark Side to grow and was weakening the Jedi. But still, Yoda and the Council continued to fight the war and chose to keep these findings suppressed, with seemingly no warnings regarding the clones ever being given to any other Jedi. While the concern about losing public confidence may have been valid, the vision in the cave was clear in showing that there was a risk that the Jedi would be destroyed and the Sith would rise to power. Facing the potential of that risk had to have made it clear to Yoda that some warning or explanation to someone would be necessary, regardless of public confidence in the Jedi. But nevertheless, Yoda continued their present course and Order 66 was never prevented. While one could argue that these findings were not enough to spur Yoda into action to prevent Order 66, given that the clones had been loyal to the Jedi and bravely fought beside them for years, or that the vision provided to Yoda on Dagobah was not necessarily destined to come true and could have been only one of many possibilities, a third event occurred during the Clone Wars that provided Yoda with a clear, real-world example of what was to come with deadly consequences for the Jedi which should have pushed Yoda into acting to prevent Order 66. During the Battle of Ringo Vinda, the clone trooper Tup, a member of the 501st Legion, fell into a trance-like state and murdered Jedi Master Tiplar. The investigations and medical procedures that resulted from this incident on Kamino, as well as from the undercover and secretive research conducted by Tup's friend and colleague within the 501st, Clone Trooper Fives, showed that every clone had a biochip implanted into their brain at the third stage of their embryonic development. 
Even leaving aside the fact that Fives desperately tried to warn Jedi Master Shock T and Anakin that the biochips were part of a larger plot connected to the clones turning against the Jedi that was ultimately ignored, at the very least, Yoda and the Jedi knew that there were secret biochips that were implanted into every clone trooper that they did not know about. And when one malfunctioned, as had happened to Tup's chip during the Battle of Ringo Vinda, the results were that Tup turned against and murdered his Jedi general. Yoda seemingly did not look into the matter further, and merely accepted the explanation given to him by Palpatine that his personal doctors determined that Tup's behavior had nothing to do with the newly discovered biochip, but was the result of a parasite native to Ringo Vinda. Therefore, while we don't know the timeline of whether Yoda's knowledge of the biochips and the murder of Tiplar by Tup happened before or after he learned the Sith created the clone army and his vision of the clone troopers turning against the Jedi on Dagobah, regardless, at some point there was a convergence of knowledge for Yoda of all three of these events. This knowledge should have been enough for Yoda to determine the Sith plot to destroy the Jedi and act to prevent Order 66. So let's see if I have these events from Season 6 of The Clone Wars correct. You all learned that it was actually Dooku who ordered the clone army for the Republic? The guy who's leading the Separatists and is part of an ancient order that's your mortal enemy? And no one thought that this changed everything? Is the best plan of action to really keep fighting the Clone Wars? Because it kinda seems like that's exactly what the Sith want you to keep doing. Providing the clone army was for the exact purpose of fighting the war. I know you're worried about public confidence, but your enemy providing you with an army should give everyone a bit of pause, no? The best and brightest minds in the Order, and no one could think of another idea? Someone say something. Oppo, you must have a better idea. No one thought to record a hologram or something? I mean, the Order does have allies in the Senate. Bail Organa being one, Padme another. It could have been anonymous. Just tell someone that this whole Clone Wars thing might have been a huge mistake. And if the clones somehow aren't as they seem, don't let an empire ruled by the Sith come into fruition. The hologram could have at least acted as some sort of insurance plan or evidence in case things went bad. And Yoda, you were given a force vision of one of the things that you'd probably expect to happen if your enemy gave you an army. I mean, a disembodied voice of a Jedi Master who died 13 years earlier, which, due to your understanding of the Force, you thought was completely impossible only a day or two earlier, is telling you that the Clone Wars itself is what's driving the dark side into power. It probably isn't time to worry about public confidence anymore, and the fighting might want to be reconsidered. Why isn't this secretive brain chip that was obviously put there by your mortal enemy not a huge red flag to anyone? especially since its malfunctioning caused a clone to immediately kill the closest Jedi to him. I mean Yoda. It's the vision playing itself out in the real world now, with a highly probable connection to a secret of biochip implanted into the army that your enemy handed to you. Is it more likely to conclude that Tup's murder of Tiplar was a sign of things to come, or that it was caused by some parasite that Palpatine's personal doctors concluded? who by the way you couldn't question or vet yourselves because the last thing Palpatine and the Kaminoans wanted was the Jedi investigating the whole biochip matter. How can it be that the Kaminoans weren't questioned harder? And why do they still think that they're communicating with a Jedi here? Once it was discovered that Dooku ordered the clone army, you had to assume that he was the one communicating with them. Why not ask them what Dooku said, or if there was anything about the clones that the Jedi should know? like secret chips with important orders on them. They probably would have told you the Kaminoans like the Jedi. Why are you literally meditating for an entire night looking for answers from the Force? The answers are all in the tangible plane of existence. There are 11 of you there. Those man hours might be better spent carrying out some investigations. That's what clone troopers Fives and Kicks did. At least these two clone troopers were able to determine the full extent of the plot themselves. In fact, with a little bit of gumshoeing and deductive reasoning on Kamino, it only took Fives about a day to figure out the true purpose of the chips. And even though they most likely didn't carry out any investigations themselves, a number of clones thought that the whole secret of biochip dilemma was so suspicious that they removed them. The clones were well ahead of the Jedi on this one. Shakti, you were there on Kamino. Why not take a look around? 
I mean, here you are hearing the news from Yoda that the Sith created the clone army to be used by the Republican Jedi, and here you are hearing Fives explain that the biochips might be endangering everyone. Why aren't you connecting the dots? Given everything that Yoda knew, how wasn't he able to figure out the Sith plan? Oppo, you must have a better idea at this point. Surely, Yoda and the Jedi High Council members weren't surprised by... Oh, they were still surprised. Given everything that Yoda knew, as demonstrated in Season 6 of the Clone Wars TV series, he still did not prevent Order 66. So there we have it. Why Yoda should have prevented Order 66, given that he knew that the Sith were behind the creation of the clone army, he saw a vision of clone troopers turning against and killing the Jedi as part of the Sith plot to destroy them, and came to understand that there was a secret of biochip implanted within the brain of every clone trooper, which when it malfunctioned, resulted in a clone murdering a Jedi Master. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For at least there was still public confidence.